Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. I'll start up my audio recording. Um, yeah, I was very encouraged to uh, get some uh, comments on my blog, The Linguist on Language, saying please do some more videos. I thought nobody cared. So uh, I'm going to do one. And uh, what I thought I would talk about, and, and I asked on my blog, I said, what, what sort of videos do people want? Do they want the general rent? Do they want the rent on language learning? Or do they want me to talk in different languages? And the response was kind of like all three. Uh, so uh, I don't need much encouragement to continue. Uh, I recently put a comment on my blog, which I called five recommendations for lazy language learners. And I said, for lazy language learners, which I think refers to most people. So let's begin right there. Most people are lazy when it comes to language learning. And I say that because most people can't be bothered learning a language unless they have a, a, some kind of a, they need it for their job or they need it for some other professional reason. Even those people who are motivated to go to um, the store and buy a language learning book or cassette, um, very often they, um, they never look at it. Once they bring it home, it sits on their shelf. Uh, I know from research that I'm trying to find a comfortable position that doesn't have me too far away from the microphone here. Uh, I know from research that uh, I attended a conference in Germany called Sprachen und Beruf, uh, Languages and Professions. And research there showed that the professional, like the corporate language learner, who might have an hour a week of class with a teacher, on average will spend an hour and a half on his or her own. So that's two and a half hours a week. That is not enough to make any significant improvement in your language. So, so I know that the majority of people are not strongly motivated to improve their language. And so I say they're lazy. And I think most people are lazy given the choice between doing something that's difficult and hard work or doing something that's easy and fun. Most people will opt for the latter. And people very quickly say, I don't have enough time. And yet I find that if you have the motivation, if you really want to do it, you find the time. And so, and I had a question at, at a forum at Link on suggestions to someone who called himself a lazy bones. So from this, I came up with five suggestions for a lazy language learner, which I think, as I said, refers to most people. The first point is spend most of your time listening because it's easy to do. You can be listening while you're driving, while you're doing other chores. You can always find time, uh, you know, while you're way standing in line at the supermarket. I do. I always have my uh, uh, iPod with me. It's not hard work. So it's something that a lazy person can do. The second thing is that once you listen, of course, it's frustrating if you can't understand. So as I always say, read it and then, you know, go in there and find some words and phrases. But don't try to know, learn things. Don't try to remember things. Don't get hung up. Don't be too, you know, type A, as they say about this, just forget it. If you forget it, you forget it. If you misunderstand certain things, if you fade out, it doesn't matter. So that was my second thing. The third, third thing was with, with, regard, with the re regard to grammar, you know, get the smallest possible book, skim it every now and again. Don't worry about what you can't remember. Don't really study it. Uh, so I think a lazy person can cope with that. The fourth, for, fourth thing was don't force yourself to speak. Don't feel compelled to speak. Uh, but when you do, just relax and listen. And the fifth thing was, don't worry about what you don't understand, about what you forget, about what you're unable to do in the language, just enjoy it. So those are my suggestions. In contrast to the four tasks that I assigned to the hardworking learner, and those were, of course, to be much more uh, goal-oriented, more deliberate, you know, set weekly goals and stick to them. Uh, don't miss a day in your language learning. Okay, whereas the lazy guy can go for a couple of days and not do it. Write. Okay, I'm too lazy to write. I'm, just, I'm working on my Italian, my Portuguese, and my Russian, having fun with it, listening, enjoying. I don't write. If I wrote, I would do a lot better. I'm too lazy to write. But for the hardworking person, write. Then I say connect with a tutor because a tutor will get you working harder. Even once a week, twice a week, via Skype nowadays, you can do it. You don't have to get in a car and go anywhere or take a bus. So for the hardworking person, get yourself a tutor. And for the hardworking person, review your words and phrases, whether it be in flashcards or off lists. I don't do it that often because I'm a lazy learner. I prefer to listen. So that was my advice. 
Well, I get an email, or at least not an email, but I get a comment from one of the people following my blog. And this person says that I have castigated people who don't have time to spend on language learning and that uh, he showed it to his friends and they found it demotivating. Here, please define lazy. You seem to be stigmatizing learners who can't devote much time to studying learning a language. Stigmatizing? And a couple of people read this on my laptop and found it quite demotivational, he says. I'm not sure that that's a word, but first of all, why would a person find it demotivating? They either consider themselves lazy or they don't. And I don't think there's any great sense of stigma attached to being lazy. It's a fact. The majority of people are not that motivated to learn languages. And even people who think they are, if they think it's going to be hard work, they soon lose interest. And it's the way the languages are taught with the emphasis on grammar and so forth that makes it seem like hard work, so people quit. And so I was trying to encourage people, even if you're lazy, even if you don't want to confront hard work, you can still learn. Here's how you do it. Uh, I don't think there's any stigma there. And I don't see how that can de be demotivating. Uh, I think there's a tendency now that we have to spend so much time fluffing people up and, and, and being nice to them. I thought it was being nice. You know, you, you can consider yourself lazy or not lazy. It, and I made the point that most people are naturally, I think, a little bit inclined to find the easy way of doing things. And there is an easy way of learning languages. It needn't be hard work. So even if you're lazy, you can do it. Put in the time. And as I often say, uh, you know, it, it's like so many other things. You find the time. People say, I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to be fit. I don't have the time to whatever it might be, take out the garbage. Once it becomes a habit, then you continue doing it. So, uh, in summary, then, uh, I don't see, uh, well, like the previous commenter, Chris here, he said, I consider myself to an active learner who tries to learn in the laziest way possible, which for most people would be the most enjoyable. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see where I stigmatized anybody. I was hoping to actually encourage people to, to believe that it's really not such a difficult and, and task. It doesn't necessarily require tremendous discipline and hard work, but it does require the time. This is the point. You can't do well in languages if you don't put in the time. So I, again, I, I definitely uh, agree with Chris's comment here. Uh, yes, put in the time. Yes, be motivated. Uh, but find and be active, but find ways to do it that suit a lazy personality, which is more enjoyable, and that's how you're going to succeed. And it can, you can achieve success and still um, study in what's essentially a lazy way. So, uh, Charles here, uh, I didn't mean to stigmatize anyone, I didn't mean to demotivate anyone. I mean, everything I do here is to try to motivate people to learn languages. I'm curious if anyone else reacted the same way. Certainly, that wasn't the intention. All right, this will be my first uh, uh, video rant here after a bit of a hiatus as I was away uh, enjoying the sunshine of the California desert. Thank you and bye for now.